The Atosha has just passed them. Uh... Slide berth. 15 degrees starboard. Would have brought us 6,000 pounds in Cyprus. Hope you enjoyed chucking it overboard. I thought I did rather well, considering the short notice. You know, one of these days you're going to cut things just a bit too fine. Well, no doubt you'll be around to pull us out. Captain Peace. Glad to see you came so well prepared, Commander. I have a warrant from Flag Officer Malta to search your vessel. Mr. Garland, show our guests aboard. Gentlemen, this way, if you please. What else can I do for you, Commander? Captain, you're charged with violating the Smuggling and Contraband Act, and that charge is not to be uh, taken lightly. 
Also requires evidence. Well, I assume that you were jettisoned your entire cargo. What cargo is that? <laughs> we're informed that you were carrying 100 automatic weapons, an unspecified number of rifles, and four cases of ammunition. Destination Cyprus. Really? And who told you that? I could send divers down to get those crates, you know. Well, I'm sure you find all kinds of things at the bottom of the sea. Yes, I'm sure I should. I'm well aware of the fact that I can't prove that those guns came from this ship. And you may think you're making fools of us, Captain, that all you're doing is degrading yourself. Submarine officer, Distinguished Service Cross, 1943, DSO and Bar, 1944. Yes, court-martialed and dismissed the service, 1945. I'm sure you'll find that down the bottom of the page. It is. You know, I spent the war in the Mediterranean. I remember you, then. You commanded the trout, didn't you? No, I was just a paid hand, Commander. 900 pounds a year for seeking out and killing whoever was supposed to be the enemy at the time. Well, some of us joined up for uh, other motives. Pity we can't all be so lucky, isn't it? Well? Nothing in the cabin, sir, and both holes are empty. All right, Lieutenant, carry on. Very good, sir. You know, the Admiralty take a pretty dim view of former naval persons running contraband, especially in the Mediterranean. You know, there are some rather nasty jails in some of these countries. Well, it's awfully decent of you to be so concerned about our welfare. Entirely sincere. Commander? Well, now that we're dead broke, back to port. Back to port. since the front's been bombed. Ah. Enjoy your leave, sir. <laughs> oh, I never enjoy leave. <laughs> Hello, Paddy. I thought you'd been appointed to London. Hello, Jeff. Good to see you. I was. I was going to look you up there, except my travel order seems you've got lost on somebody's debt. Hey, let me buy you a drink. No, I can't. It's rather important. Well, I've made some arrangements and I haven't even checked into the hotel. The hotel and the young lady have been taken care of. This way, sir. Yes, I understand exactly how you feel. First the order to London, then cancel it, now this. But there is a reason for it. Oh, that's reassuring. There's nothing quite like the Mediterranean sun, is there? Beautifully enervating, turns a man into a complete idiot. Unless, of course, you're born to the climate. Besides, the weather's dreadful in London. Thought I'd save you the trip. You did mention something about there being a reason for my being brought here. What Lieutenant Commander Peace means... What Lieutenant Commander Peace means is that he's tired and irritable. I didn't request this leave. If it's been cancelled, I'll return to my ship. You will, Lieutenant Commander. Indeed, you will. This is Admiral Sir Reginald Tringham. Director of Naval Intelligence. I'm not his Uncle Bertie, after all. Something, no doubt, you're beginning to suspect. It had crossed my mind, sir. Shall we walk a bit? Splendid view. I suppose you've seen it before. According to your report, you carried out a most unusual mission this past week. Against the advice of your intelligence liaison, and with your fuel dangerously low, you went to the Bay of Naples and carried out an attack. An unauthorized attack on an enemy battleship. Why? It seemed to be worth the risk, sir. And you succeeded, fortunately for you. Otherwise, you'd have been up against an official reprimand. Otherwise, I'd have been at the bottom of the sea, sir. And I wouldn't have had to bother about a reprimand. No, I suppose you wouldn't. Worth the risk. That's an interesting looking contraption. Shall we try it?
Do you think this will be worth the risk, please? It's an entirely new and devastatingly efficient U-boat developed by Blown and Voss. The Germans call it NP-1. NP-1? One. It's the only one of its kind, so far. It has to be the last. The war at sea depends on it. You'll notice it didn't say may depend on it. Depends on it. The NP-1 carries 18 homing acoustic torpedoes. She's equipped with a new type rangefinder well in advance of us or the Americans, which enables her to fire those torpedoes from a depth of 50 meters without using her periscope at all. What's more, the Germans have come up with a rather revolutionary system of propulsion. What speed does your sub do? She might make a single burst of nine knots in an emergency. The NP-1 can do 22 knots submerged. 22 knots. That means that she can outrun any of the ordinary escort ships in the North Atlantic underwater. And to make it worse, the damn thing is virtually silent. At least it doesn't sound like anything we've ever heard. So, Lieutenant Commander, all I'm asking you to do is to find it and kill it. What an extraordinary mixture. Look at those faces and you can see the signs of every conquering horde to across the Mediterranean. Doesn't that sound unbelievable? The 22 knots, I mean. Of course it does. Fortunately, the German high command agree. They think it's bound to blow up sooner or later. Blown and Voss disagree. So the NP-1 has been sent on a long tryout cruise of the South Atlantic, operating out of a hidden anchorage in Southwest Africa, from the most dangerous coast in the world. The Skeleton Coast. That's 500 miles of reef and shoal. Well, there's no way into it, much less an anchorage. So we thought. Till the Germans found one. If the NP-1 should return successfully from its crewing trip, the Germans will start mass producing its type. But if it fails to return with no hint of what happened to it, they might assume that it's blown up or sunk from malfunction and abandon the project. You must make sure that it does not return and that nobody learns what happens to it. Well, even if I find this NP-1, how am I supposed to catch her? I mean, 22 knots. Precisely. You could never catch her. So, as a more practical approach, you are to find her hidden anchorage and attack the NP-1 in its mooring. If it exists. It exists. You'll have complete access to naval intelligence reports and every scrap of information we've been able to assemble. Even so, I... We have no illusions about the odds confronting you. But we do have to try, don't we? Sealed orders will route you through South Atlantic Command to Cape Town. Neither your crew nor your officers are to know where you're going or why. That's an extraordinary requirement, sir. It can't be helped. If German intelligence learns that the NP-1 was attacked, the whole purpose of your mission will be lost. They'll simply build another, and after that, a hundred more. Attacking a U-boat in its mooring not on the high seas. Bound to be survivors. If you think that German intelligence is smart enough to pick up a leak from my crew, what happens when I sail into port with a whole bag full of German prisoners? That will not happen. <laughs> There'll be no prisoners. You can't guarantee that. You will guarantee it. There can be no survivors, Commander. Is that quite clear? No survivors. I suppose we could look around for some passengers for a cruise. Just a straight thought. God bless. Take a 
us two more years of running for others before we can afford another load of our own. Is it possible, Geoffrey? The game is becoming too risky for the prize. Well, maybe. Look, if you want to sign off at this point, you can, you know. Nothing else I care to do. No place else I care to go. Reporting, sir. Uh, long time no see. Well, isn't this cozy that three of us back together again? You haven't changed a bit, Davy. You're not looking too well yourself. Uh, well, still the same old game. Yes, chess was always a bit beyond you, wasn't it? Beyond my interest. Mind if I have a drink? Why the visit, Harry? Well, what you might call a condolence call. Good whiskey. News travels fast. And if you're in the right place to listen, your own money, wasn't it? I must have hurt. Still, life is a veil of tears, and by the sweat of our brow must we earn our bread. Except I have a better idea. Anything like that idea of yours I read about in the newspapers a few years back? Something about um, you and your skipper scuttling a coaster for the insurance money? By the way, when did you get out of prison? A few months ago. Courts must be slipping. I thought they got you for life. Oh, the uh, evidence was only circumstantial. Besides, they took my war record into consideration. Don't forget, my record was honorable. Uh, at least as honorable as yours, Commander. You mean they never caught you? Oh, you've been in the newspapers too, Davy. I suppose that's what sent you scuttling back to Papa here. It must have been very unpleasant for that distinguished family of yours, all that scandal. A nasty thing, a wife like that. Well, that's enough, Harry. You know, uh, I wasn't too surprised to learn what you're doing now. For some of us, the war is never over. We become addicted. It's uh, a way of life. What do you want, Harry? I want to make you a rich man, Skipper. A very rich man. There, it's yours. A token of good faith. About what you must have paid for that unfortunate cargo of yours. I never knew you to be so thoughtful. Nothing is more important than an old friend, Skipper. Besides, I'll get most of it back from Malta for having informed on you. So it was you. You. Please, don't consider it. <laughs> Johan, my associate. You've acquired some charming companions since the war. Well, Johann is a man of many talents. You'd be surprised how often he comes in handy. Oh, it's not like you, Davy, losing your temper like that. There was no reason for it. You didn't really think I'd send you the quad? No. I knew they'd never catch you, Skipper. Not the peacetime Navy. You knew we'd have to dump our cargo, then. That's right. I wanted you to need the money enough to listen to what I have to say. All right, Johann, put the knife away. We're amongst friends. Well, how much did you lose today? Five, six thousand pounds? I'm here to talk about half a million pounds for each of us. 
half a million quid, Skipper. Just think about it. Go on. All you have to do is take this ship down to Southwest Africa and into the skeleton coast. Nothing you haven't done before. You never knew that that's where we went on the Trout's last mission, did you, Davy? No one was supposed to know. I didn't know then, not till much later, but uh, that doesn't matter now. All that matters now is that you're the only man alive who knows how to get ashore inside the skeleton coast. For what purpose? In pursuit of a very large tin can. Diamonds. Where'd you get these? They, uh, they belong to a geologist named Eric Sorel. He worked for a mining syndicate in southwest Africa, searching for new diggings northwest of Damara. They, uh, they take rather elaborate precautions to keep the stones from being slipped out of the diamond area. Uh, electric fences, x-ray, land and air patrols, but... Uh, because of his work, Sorel had complete freedom of movement inside the area, so every time he left an operating field, he took a few stones with him. After a couple of years, he had quite a collection. The problem was getting them out. First time he tried, he was lucky. Second time, five years in prison. Were you met him? Yeah, as luck would have it. We uh, formed a partnership to get the diamonds out. Where's he now? Dead. No, not what you think. Uh, Bad pump. Glad to see you're taking it so well. There. The diamonds on the edge of the Kakao Felt, that's 200 miles south of Vento Bay. Nothing but uninhabited desert, barren mountains, and the Diamond Security Patrol covers the whole area. No one can get in or out except by sea. But surely they must patrol the coast. Skeleton Coast polices itself. 500 miles of reefs and shoals. No ship has ever survived it, except for the trout. It was a long time ago. No reason why you shouldn't do it again. And this time for half a million pounds. Unless, uh, unless you have some private reason for not going back. sweat for that one. Slow hit both engines. I'll take her out of the harbor from up top. That's your soldier, Skipper. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Captain Jeffrey Pease. Who the hell are you? Julie Chambois. Perhaps we should meet again when you're in a better mood. This is my better mood. And I suppose I shall have to get used to it. Don't worry, you're not staying. I see you through a fit. Forget it, Harry. You're not bringing your home comforts. There's a bit more to it than that. I'm not having your bloody woman on my ship. I'm not his woman, Captain. Worst luck? I don't know what the game is, but it's not on. Told you you wouldn't like it. I am your partner, Captain. And as I had no choice about you, you have no choice about me. We'll see about that. I'm afraid you have no alternative, Skipper. You see, Sorel never told me the exact location of the diamonds. She's the only one who knows, and she's not telling. Not until we get there. Sorel's woman. Sorel is dead. I tried to persuade her to stay behind and wait for her share, but for some reason she doesn't seem to trust me. Maybe she'll trust you. The only one who knows where the diamonds are and the only one who knows how to get near them. <laughs> I'm a smashing matchmaker, I am!
steer 340. Aye, aye, skipper. 340. Steady as she goes. Just like old time. Engine room to Captain. Damage repair, sir. Please can't keep hitting your server. Give me a sounding. Sweep all around, please. Number one. Half ahead, both engines. Half astern, both engines. Half astern, both engines. Stop engines. Stop engines. Assume silent routine. Are you going to sit down in? And for what? I mean, what are we after? It's your job, Elder. It's on our boards, Gibber. be against regulations. I'm supposed to be your navigating officer. You can report me when we get to the Cape. If we get to the Cape, you mean. You're supposed to be giving me a sonar report. We're practically surrounded by echoes, none of them moving. That is what we're waiting for down here, isn't it? Something moving? We're waiting for a target, number one. Look, I didn't mind your past tendencies toward glory hunting. At least the other times I knew where we were and what you were risking my life for. So we're going to have to service recharge the battery soon. How oh, soon? No, no more. No way to For what? That'll be all. Look, Jeffrey, I'm sure you know what you're doing, but... That's right. A hydrophone effect bearing 180 degrees, sir, closing fast. Action stations. Hostile hydrophone effect closing bearing 205. Very fast AG, sir. About 350 revs and engine noises. Could it be a surface ship? No, sir. She's at about 180 feet. I've never heard anything like it. She's doing about 20 knots. Could be a whale with a belly ache. Switch off all auxiliaries. Absolute silence. No movement in the boat. Anybody drops anything will be in my report.
Stand by to surface. Check main vents. All main vents checked, shot, sir. Surface. Low twos and falls. All right, number one. Switch off echo sounders and call up continuous sounding, sir. I'll take over from the bridge. Alone, sir? Three and four tubes. Eight. Three and four tubes ready, sir. Set ten and twelve depth settings. disrupted my schedule. I suppose you know the odds against us. Two years if we are caught in the prohibited area, five if we are found with diamonds. I mean the odds against surviving. Captain Peace, I know why it is called the Skeleton Coast. But you have been there before and you survived. Doesn't mean to say I can do it again. I think you can. If you want to. Why shouldn't I want to? I don't know. You know the risks. You didn't have to come. I prefer to take the risk. Why? Life belongs to those who can pay for it. Or find somebody to pay for them. Perhaps. Like Sorel? Sorel is dead, Captain. And dead men are history. Nothing more? Nothing more? And sometimes history is best forgotten. You seem to forget easily. Do I? And what about you, Lieutenant Commander Peace? Ah! Glad to see you two in such fine spirits. Why shouldn't you be with one and a half million pounds worth of diamonds waiting for us? What 
I'll back off. You bloody great idiot. Now, now you come one step nearer, and I'll bash your head in. security police. Well, what's the problem? A slight confusion, Captain, about your intentions. Harbour master's got my papers. Yes. Well? I thought perhaps you might be unaware that you're on the edge of the Kuykerfeldt prohibited area. Yes, I know. Sir? Your papers say that you're taking a passenger to Cape Town. But your first mate tells me that you're going there for cargo. If we get some, it'll help pay for the return trip. And if not? Have to come back empty, won't we? Then I shall look forward to see you again, Captain. Should you stop here on your return. Of course, I shall notify Cape Town of your arrival. They will be expecting you. Thank you. Not at all, Captain. Good day. Uh-huh. You've really done it this time, Harry. Why the hell did you say we're going to Cape Town for cargo? We're supposed to be carrying passengers. Well, how the hell was I to know what you put in your damn papers? Well, if you don't know, why don't you keep your mouth shut? Well, he probably thinks he scared us off anyway. You better hope so. You better bloody well hope so, Harry. <laughs> but 
talk to you? Under a flag of truth? <laughs> Tell me, if Sir Ellard lived, how was he going to get the diamonds out? He didn't know. Probably in his pocket. That's how he was caught. Not very clever. Not clever at all. He was a foolish man, I suppose. With expensive dreams. Cost him his life. The dreams didn't kill him, Captain. That was my privilege. Riker said he died in prison. Sorel used to talk about being rich. It was like a game he played. He was going to buy a villa in Capri, with a terrace overlooking the sea. The walls would be white to catch the sunset, with glazed vitri tiles on the floor. Oh, he described it often. And that was only the beginning. Did you believe him? No. I knew nothing about the diamonds until he brought the first ones out. Soon there would be millions, he said. And everything he'd promised would come true. But, unlike us, Captain, he was much too innocent to be a thief. He had no guile. And so he was caught. In prison, he knew he was dying, so he made his deal with Riker. Then how are you responsible? Because he only stole from me, and because I didn't stop him. Did you love him? He was my husband. Where we are going, is it very dangerous? Yes. You and me, David and Johan, even Riker. It would solve a great many problems if we all drowned, wouldn't it? probably return it to its original condition one of these days. The first time you were here, it was a long time ago. Oh, have I broken the truth, Captain? Four years ago, a trawler broke on the shoals. You can still see it. Inland, about 500 yards. That's where it went aground. The shoreline shifted since then. The coast that walks. Do you think the sand will cover it? Maybe, someday. It's worrying. Why should it? Any number of wrecks along this coast. One more or less wouldn't make any difference. Unless it happened to be the one we were looking for. My compliments, Captain. No, not deserved. Nowhere else Sorel could have hidden the diamonds. Not if we wanted to find them again. The wreck is about three miles inland. The question is, where inside the wreck? And the answer? I am almost tempted to tell you. found the passage in 1879, and then she broke her back on these shoals here. All hands lost. It's encouraging. In 1891, the British whaler Clan Alpine found the swallow's path through the breakers and slipped past the shoals. Then, drawing 21 and a half feet, she was finally ripped open by a protecting ridge here. We have to get through these two rows of exposed reefs out into the lagoon there. that getting there is half the fun.
Good morning. Has it been like this all night? Just for the past few hours. Shouldn't last much longer. I hope not. I prefer to see where I'm going. You get used to it. You can get used to anything, but it's not always an improvement. One way to stay alive. Adapt or die. Is that your motto, Captain? Survive. Except one can adapt too well. Like a species of beetle, Sir L once told me about. This species of beetle is blind. Oh, it once had eyes like any other beetle. Until one day the wind blew it into the desert. In order to survive, it had to burrow deep under the sand, out of the sun. It now has completely adapted to its environment. But it is quite blind as a result. Not a very interesting story. And why tell me? Purely in the interest of science. <laughs> my watch. With your watch 20 minutes ago. Put it on my report, sir. Oh, bloody fog. How long have we been sailing this close to the shore? Three hours. We're in the down coast current. Oh, 30 fathoms under us, that's some comfort. Steer 105 degrees. 105. A few minutes before noon, the fog ought to have lifted enough for us to get a sight of a high hill on the shoreline. Pretty soon after that, we ought to see some white water ahead. Not exactly a reliable bearing. That's the best I've got. I knew you two would get along. Cigarette? Any minute now, by dead reckoning. Dead being the operative word.
bloody thing loose before it drives us on the rocks. Chart and the trout only. I didn't know where we were then. Now it's just a 24 hour walk to the diamonds. Every year, for a better way to annihilate a submarine, just turn it into an oven and cook everyone inside. firing at. Until you kill the lot of us. No, sir. Johan survived. God knows how. The stories he told were so wild, no one believed him. But I did, because of one thing he remembered. Got fished on the trout's cunning tower. Once I believed him, I knew where you'd taken the trout and why. And why the hell did you bring it back here? He's the only one who knows what it's like in there. Only one alive, at any rate. Come on, Davy, give us a hand. We don't have to take him with us. Sorel told me exactly where it is. Maybe he did. But Johan's the only one who's seen the wreck, and he's the only one who's got a chance of leading us there. Davy. Don't worry, Skipper. He doesn't know who you are. Riker never told me about Johan, or about what happened here. I want you to know that. Why? Make any difference? No. Not to me. Not to me either, so you can spare yourself the concern. So bald nur der Wind blast. Diese Sand schneidet wie Glasspiel. Feeling better? 
You're not alone this time, Johan. I'll take care of you. Come on, get your things. If he finds out who you are, he'll try to kill you. No, I tried to kill him. Ah, <sighs> uh, these tunes are like quicksand. Even if we start at dawn, we're not going to make it before noon. If the wind gets up, we may not make it at all. my share for large scotch on the rocks. Where is it? In the rope locker of the bow anchor. What a bloody good that's going to do us. It's where Soren told me to look. Take months to shift this lock. 
Since the rail plant to the diamonds here, the whole ship must have been uncovered. Or maybe. But the wind's had six years to cover it up. We might be able to work our way forward from the inside. out to crack. Let's try in there. 